Should you spend your $399 on the Western Star 49X in SnowRunner? Well, ow! All right. Every time I turn, it's like, nope, you're not allowed. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Save me! Woo! Ah! Oh no! Oh! Oh! Like, what the heck? It won't turn left. The fact that it's like, oh, even if, even if you want to roll it over, it's just going to be temperamental and not do what you want. I literally have to have an extra, like, adjustment point for which to provide force like that rock to get it to flip back over. That is so ridiculous. That was the most infuriating rescue of my life. So at this point, phase two is here on all systems. Patch 10 is live and the Western Star 49X is out in the wild. And as you can see, this one has, <laughs> this one has been through a lot. Now, since using this Western Star 49X on my recent stream, I feel like I've got a lot of time driving it and I've got a lot of time into it and I feel like I'm, I'm ready to give a really well thought out opinion on whether or not you should buy this truck. Now, a lot of people are split on this, right? A lot of people are split on whether or not this truck is worth buying. A lot of people are split on whether or not this truck is worth the money. A lot of those people are split on a lot of things, really, about this truck. And I'm, like I said, I'm back and forth. I go back and forth on this truck a lot. Now, I, I think the absence of a true mud tire is really disappointing. I do like the fact that they have the UOD2 tires on it right now. I think that's good. However, I do feel as though some of the physics of the load-bearing axle are a little bit underwhelming. Now, not only does it visually clip into the frame at times, but it also prevents this truck from being able to be flipped back over easily if you flip it onto its side, as you saw in some of those stream clips that I included at the beginning of the video. Now, my bandit here, I've actually left here as sort of a mobile repair unit, and that's literally why it's here. So, Western Star 49X repair, hop back into the 49X, and we're good to go. Now, there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of units of bricks that are available back here in this area. We're just gonna pop down there and get them. It's not gonna be enough to, like, fill up a trailer or anything, but it's gonna be just enough that it's worth going back down in there. Now, I've decided not to bring the bandit with me as a support truck because I want to show you guys what this thing is like when you sort of strike out on your own with it and it can be a good truck this is not a bashing session of the 49x actually not at all it's actually so the fact that it is a premium truck I know will and has clouded some people's views of it and they've kind of viewed it in the same light as the Apache now, the Apache, though, was not, in my opinion, was not useful. I was not a big fan of the Apache. However, I do like this truck a lot. Now, another criticism that I've been hearing from the community is that it is a quote-unquote reskinned and rebadged Cat CT680. And, I mean, the thing is, you could differentiate this between the Cat CT680 Obviously with the uh, with the adjustable load-bearing axle, but there are also a couple of other little details here and there And the interior does look good as you can see I have my driver hands turned off right now uh, As you can do now in phase two again on all systems. We got beans chilling out right there, and it's all Good now another thing that I do really like about this truck before I get onto my criticisms of it I do really like the horn the horn is awesome <laughs> It's great. Like, literally, it's probably one of the... We should not be in there. Being in that is not good. Not good at all. Not good whatsoever. Let's back our way out of there. And ease ourselves back this way. Come on. Dude, I've got your diff locks on. And you've got no way to trail. You should be fine. Now... Back into it, I, I love the horn, I love the looks of the truck, I just wish that you could do a higher suspension 
slightly bigger tires, and that it wasn't so hard to flip over. Now, well, when I say flip over, it's easy to flip onto its side, but, but I mean flip back over onto its wheels. I wish it wasn't so hard to rescue it. Now, one of the other things about this truck is the fact that I wish that it was a... It's almost like I, I... The question of whether or not it's worth spending money on is like, I wish it was easier to answer, right? Because it's not an easy question to answer. And the reason why it's not easy to answer is because it's a very subjective thing. Like, do you really like the truck? Did you really like it when it was first announced by Western Star? If you really liked it when it was first announced by Western Star, I mean, I think it would be worth getting it solely because of the cool factor of having a brand new Western Star in-game. However, a lot of people do bring up the fact that, you know, like, oh, this is a free truck in ATS. And while, you know, that is a valid point, this is also not ATS. So I don't think we can make that comparison like, a, you know, apples to oranges or whatever you want to, or apples to apples, apples to oranges, whatever kind of comparison you want to make. But at the end of the day, I mean, do I think that, you know, $399 is too expensive for this truck? Not necessarily. However, my issue kind of arises when I think, well, wait a minute, the KRS Bandit was included with phase two and like or at least if you had the season pass or if you bought phase two and it is a monster when it comes to capability that thing will literally literally rip this apart piece by piece like it it could literally like if this was if this was a battleship i know this is going to be a very odd comparison but if this was a battleship and the krs bandit was a battleship it would have it literally this thing would be going stop blowing holes in my ship all the freaking time because it's that much better the krs bandit literally will eat this thing for breakfast lunch and dinner and i don't know how to how to put that in such a way that it doesn't seem oh my god like what's the best way to describe it i don't even i don't even know how to describe it without sounding like I'm bashing on the 49X because I'm not bashing on the 49X. I never want to bash on the 49X. It's a good truck and I think it fits into the game well. However, I think for a paid truck, I think its capabilities are lacking. I would really like to see a lifted suspension. I would really like to see some proper mud tires. And I think, you know, I think engine wise, I think the engine options are good. I, I have nothing to complain about in terms of engine options, but I think when it comes to the actual, like, driving capability of the freaking thing, I think it could use a little bit of a buff, honestly. I, I don't think that this thing has realized its full capability yet, and the sad part about that is that I really like driving it, you know what I mean? I really like driving it, and that's why I wish that its capabilities would get a little bit of a buff. And I think that if its capabilities got a little bit of a buff, it would be so much better. It would be so much better. Now, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments down below on whether or not you think this thing, A, if it needs a buff, B, if it's worth $399, or C, if you think it would be worth $399 if it got a little bit of a buff from the developers. I think it would be totally worth the money if it had just a little bit of a buff and just a little bit of a improved, like, suspension options list and, like, tire options list and all sorts of things that would just make the entire truck so much better. So much better. And it wouldn't be all that much to add, necessarily. It would just be a few things here and there, a few little things, because, again, I like the truck, don't get me wrong. I love this thing. I just wish it had the capabilities to back up the looks. I mean, you, if you like a truck where you always feel like you are potentially in danger of not making it and you always have to be, you know, paying attention to every single move you make, every single step, every single move, all that stuff. If you like that kind of gameplay, like if you were one of the people that said, SnowRunner is not hard enough and needs a hardcore mode, you'll really enjoy this truck. I mean, I know there are some people that think that the, uh, or that believe and prefer 
the, you know, like, that constant edge of the seat, like, is my truck going to get stuck? Is it going to roll over? Like, all these things. And, and, and I think that some people really feel like that is the more realistic way to go and that that's the way the game should be played. And if that's how you play the game, you know, nothing, I have nothing against that. I mean, that's totally up to you. And you may very well really enjoy the 49X if that's how you prefer to play the game. But if that's not how you prefer to play the game, I have a feeling that you may be just a tad disappointed with the truck's capabilities. And especially for an entry price of $399. And then especially when you look at the fact that you could buy the entire Season 2 and you would literally get access to the KRS Bandit by just buying Season 2. And the capabilities of the KRS Bandit are wild and out of this world when you compare them to the Western Star 49X. So after, like I said before, after spending lots of time with it, I think that's kind of where I sit with it, you know? Like in in pretty mild off-road terrain, it's great. On the highway, it's great. Like it's actually, when you put the highway gearbox in it, it's got a lot of speed to it. It's, it's not slow by any stretch of the imagination. It's not slow. However, you have to remember that like, when you're driving it in Yukon maps, those Yukon maps are going to be a lot harder than your standard run-of-the-mill like Michigan maps. Now, don't get me wrong, that's nothing against the Michigan maps. The Michigan maps aren't bad by any means. Like, I think the Michigan maps are, you know, are, are great, but they don't necessarily have that constant challenge factor that the Yukon maps have, where in the Yukon, if you don't bring a capable truck like right out the get-go if you don't bring a capable truck you're gonna be getting stuck a lot you're gonna be rolling over a lot you're gonna be getting into a lot of situations where you're gonna need a highly capable truck that's why the bandit is such a freaking beast and that's why it's so good for the yukon and that's why i've used it as a support rig for almost every main yukon mission i've done and it makes so much sense to use it for that. It really, really, really makes so much sense to use it for that. So at this point in the video, I would really love to know what y'all have been using in the Yukon. Now that phase two is out for everyone, I would love to know what trucks you've been using in the Yukon. Um, if you bought the 49X, if you feel like it was a well-spent 399, uh, or if you feel like it was not necessarily a well-spent 399, and if you have spent a lot more time in other trucks and if you ended up buying the 49x and then sold it because you were like what the heck is this I, I i'm just gonna go back to my other trucks now i have faith in this thing i think it's a good like runabout truck but it's not necessarily a good like go out into the wilderness and handle heavy tasks truck so with that being said i would like i said before i would love to know y'all's opinions on this thing in the comment section down below I like it, but I really think it needs a buff. I really, really, really think it needs a buff. So, yet again, if you all enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see y'all next time.